get started here. And we're just going to have a multitude of coverages we're going to be talking about as well. And the first concept that we're going to talk about is kind of a fundamental passing concept that you need to have every single Madden. And we're going to use this out of the play bunch strong or out of the formation bunch strong offset to start. And then we're going to kind of go from there. From an audible perspective, the only audible that I would set is I would put the play uh, dagger in your audibles, and then you're pretty much good to go. You're going to come out in this play corner strike, but then we can audible to different plays to kind of break this down. So the first concept that we're going to be going over is we're going to be going over a shallow crossing concept. Now, a shallow crossing concept can be uh, a, a lot of these concepts can be tweaked slightly, but they're still basically the same concept, and they still basically attack similar spaces on the field, which is really, really important. So the main purpose of the shallow crossing concept is that it is designed to it's designed to basically go ahead and allow you to be able to consistently beat man coverage. Okay, so the way that we're going to create this shallow cross concept is through the play wide trail. As you see on the left, we have this post route, which is really good for attacking man-to-man -man coverage. You can smart route this if you want to. And then on the back side, we're going to have a shallow route, somebody on a, a quick shallow drag. So we're going to drag the slot receiver. And then the other routes are really just simply like clear out routes for the shallow post. So it could be a streak on the outside to clear this post against a deep zone. It could be something we've been doing a lot lately. It's just a simple flat and ghost route is kind of a check down read because we're going to give this post a lot more space to be able to work against main coverage. Bunch of different options, but again, the primary routes that really matter here are the drag and the post. So I'm just going to put these other guys kind of to the flat to get them out of the way. And I just want you to see this interaction. So essentially our read here is we're looking to the left side. If there is space on that left side, if there's not a zone, flat or something like that we're going to be looking to throw this drag when he comes across and we're going to trust the rack catch this is a really good concept this year because rack catching is so effective and you could do this from anybody so like for example you could go through and you could run the tight end on the shallow route if you wanted to and then you could run you know a street corner concept if you wanted to do something like this perfectly good combo and you're using this this two-man interaction really between your shallow. So you see here the zones, they drift back so we can check down to our drag and hit the hit the easy hit the easy read. All right. So that's kind of the 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 shallow aspect of the of the route combination. Now the next route, the next aspect of the route combination is what do you do if they say, let's say they play really good man coverage, or let's say this is their user and they really bite down uh, to go in and guarding that route. Well, then you're going to be turning your attention to your post, which you're going to see here. When he crosses the middle of the field, he's pretty good at being able to beat man coverage. Now, in that situation, and this is what's really important, we can, like I said, we can change the depths of the routes. So right there, that specific post is a little deep, especially if they have an outside third. But let's say, let's say they had like cover two man type defense, which is a little bit more common because of the corner route. And I'll talk about how we can use a corner route in a minute to manipulate that cover one defense. But basically, again, this is kind of the route com combination. And what you see here is you see he's going to be able to step up. We're going to be able to hit that against man coverage. Now, the next kind of component of this would be, let's say that, you know, they start to adjust to that. So maybe they throw a little cover one robber in. Well, we can tweak the concept slightly to make it a little bit more effective. One of the simple tweaks to this, and this is how you could potentially create this concept really from anything, is with the use of a slot apprentice post. So a slot apprentice post is a little sharper cutting than this post will be. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the slot receiver on a slot apprentice post. We're going to drag this solo receiver. And then from there, we could run a corner route to this outside guy. Or if you wanted to, you could even do a, a tight end post, something simple like this. This is a great combo. The reason this is effective is because now your shallow crossing concept is really happening between your tight end and your uh, drag route and it's attacking another area of the field and you'll notice that the sharp cutting post he doesn't get played by middle thirds which is really really effective okay that's another way that you can kind of create the same idea the same concept uh, and then another thing that I wanted to go over is this is actually a really popular setup right now would be to go to the play Durham we're gonna put the slot receiver on a slot apprentice post and then we're gonna motion the running back out and put him on a drag now the reason this is such a good setup is because it really does a good job of kind of getting some clear out routes on the field 
just in case they are running some zone coverage behind this. So now our shallow cross concept is, is occurring between our slot receiver and our running back. And then we have these deep runoff routes that are going to do a good job of opening the underneath space of the field where we're going to hit this either post or we're going to hit the, uh, the running back on the little drag on, on the little drag route. So that is the shallow, the shallow, uh, the shallow crossing concept. Now in other years of Madden, this concept has also been manifested and I want to go into trips tight end. Now this concept has also been manifested, uh, through what's known as a slant post concept. The slant post concept and the shallow concept are very similar and they're, they essentially are the same basic idea. So what the slant post concept would do is we would slant this inside trips receiver, we would flat this uh, middle trips receiver, streak the outside trips receiver, and then we would post the tight end. So instead of a drag route that's attacking the same space that the running back's attacking, we're now using a slant route that's going to attack about 10 to 15 yards to the sideline. The problem with slants in Madden 24 is they sometimes will stop in the middle of the field. Hopefully that does not happen in next year's Madden and really has never happened before I couldn't remember. So hopefully this is something that's going to be, you know, cross cross applicable to multiple Maddens. And the idea here is that you do need to know that slant post is really good. Now what makes slant the slant post aspect of the play better than let's say the shallow cross really important thing to show real quick. So I talked about how we can change the depths of the routes. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to shade my coverage underneath and we're gonna run that first version of the play, which was the drag route with the post, and then we'll block the running back. What you're gonna see if we do this is this drag is gonna run himself into coverage because the defense is saying we're gonna take away the flat zones. Oftentimes this is also done out of most defenses in Madden that are really good, they're gonna do this shade down technique to try to take away these crossers. The problem is, and this is where the slant comes into play, that slant, when you pair that with a little running back flat route, it's gonna basically create a really nice little high low and the slant is gonna get into a really soft spot against those coverages and super effective and efficient. So that's the shallow cross or the slant post concept from a couple of meta formations. Now I wanna take a minute and just show how this can apply to some random formation. We're gonna jump into gun doubles here and we'll explain how this, how this all kind of works together and how you can literally do this from anything. So what we're gonna do here and if you don't have a tight end apprentice post, I did want to say this real quick. Let's say you don't have a tight end apprentice or a slot apprentice that you could put that sharp cutting post out there. Feel free to just put a smart routed in route and then you're going to drag the other guy, right? This is what it would look like if this is a true shallow cross. The reason the post is better is it just gets to deeper parts of the field, better spacing, harder to user, better man beating ability. So it's just pretty much a better method. But in general, this is the idea. And if you wanted to, you could go with a comeback route on the outside and a slot apprentice post as well. Again, the main concept here is we're looking to that tight end. If they bail back, as you see that yellow zone bailed back, we can throw right in there and get our easy 10 to 15 yards against that coverage. So love this play. I think this is um, a really simple way to create shallow crosses from really anything. Shallow cross is truly one of the best concepts in my opinion in Madden every single year it's the best man beating concept pretty much unanimously almost every single year this will be the best man beating concept and you can apply it from so 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 many things for example bunch tight end a great another great formation and we'll show you how to apply it out of this so you're just going to post the tight end you already have a shallow cross route in this circle receiver and then to make this a really good man beater I like to just zig this guy on the left so you see here even if they do go to zone right? You still have the ability to hit your tight end route against that, against that coverage. So there's just so much with this concept that makes it, I think what it is, but it, it's really the main, and the reason we talk about this play first, in my opinion, is just because it's the best way to consistently manipulate man coverage and you can change. It could be a drag. It could be a slant. It could be an, a five yard in route. Okay. But this idea right here, the simple shallow little post slant post cross, really, really effective for attacking man-to-man. -man. So now that we've kind of gotten our opponent out of running a lot of man coverage, we're going to go into the best zone-beating concept in Madden pretty much every single year. And this is the sail concept, the sail technique. 
Now, there's two ways to run the sale concept, and I'm going to put one of them in my audibles as flood play, but we're going to come out in corner strike, and I'm going to show you kind of two methods. So what we're going to do is the first method is just a simple streak, corner, flat. You can do this from even the play wide trail. This is what sale is, okay? Now, if you really wanted to, I will say, you don't actually have to have the flat to run the sale concept. The main idea here is we're attacking that deep right sideline, okay? So as you can see, the idea and the reason we run this to the short side when we're running it with a streak as our clear out is this streak will clear out a lot better when he's on the short side from a compression set. If we were in a trip set, we would want to run this to the wide side, and I'll show that in a minute. But what you're going to see is he's going to clear out that outside quarter, and then you're just going to throw this on the sideline and basically try to possession catch it. Very simple little streak, corner, flat. The cool part is there's a lot of ways to use this. And the, in your bunch formation, they can't really key on one player because you can run it for multiple players. This is why we can audible to this play called flood here. And now we have our tight end on this super deep corner route that you can't really hot route. And as you can see, super good play. So again, it's essentially just made it so that the cover four, if it's a cover four defense, or if it's a cover three defense, they are going to struggle to defend this. And the reason why is because the streak's going to clear out the third. The flat's not going to get deep enough. And then you can throw the corner in that intermediate deep right sideline, right? So the other method to run this, and this is why this is a method to run this, is one of the methods to try to defend this play would be to either use a cover three cloud type of defense or to use a cover two defense where they basically are going to go ahead and they're going to back these guys up. They might even put these guys in 30-yard cloud flats. Now, the purpose of this is to try to get that flat to play the deep sideline, to try to get the deep half to play the streak, and to try to get the underneath flat to play the tight end. So what you'll see here is this is pretty much what happens when you run to the short side, as you see. Okay, so this is why this new concept has been introduced into Madden, but it is really the same. It's really just an expansion on the sale concept, and that would be to, out of compression set, running this from the wide side of the field now to utilize the double corner. And the double corner is going to use a deep corner route that's going to get over the top of those 30-yard clouds, a short corner route that's going to get underneath those deep quarters and deep thirds, and a clear-out streak to the tight end. As you can see, this double corner concept is attacking the same space on the field and really doing the same basic idea. So if I was to go to some a, a cover three coverage, for example, that deep corner route is going to serve as an outside pull route for the circle receiver. So what you're going to see here is that short corner is going to be able to be thrown over the top of any kind of purple cloud, anything. It's going to be covered. Now, the other reason that we started and there, there's multiple methods to this, but another thing you can do is you can use this glitchy fade route. Now, the reason this fade route out of flood is really glitchy is because it is angled to the outside. So when you're in a compression set, you can't normally run a flood concept because the clear out needs to be kind of getting to the outside of the numbers to clear out the outside thirds. But this is really good for cover three cloud because as you'll see here, that that safety has to play that, that fade route because he's fading outside of the numbers and then you're able to throw your tight end underneath that. So that's another thing. Another really important thing to, 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 to uh, note. Now let's talk about cover two. So again, the main way that people were defending us previously is they were going to do a, a double Mabel coverage. If they do that here, because we have more space, we have the wide side of the field, this is where the tight end will clear out the deep half, and then this deep corner is going to get over the top of a 30-yard cloud. As you can see, he's going to get way over the top of a deep cloud flat, and this is how this play becomes one of the best zone beating concepts in the game is because it's very difficult to guard every route that, that you have in your arsenal. Okay, So you need a deep corner route. And, and typically, a lot of these corner routes now, like out of flood, for example, if you run them to the wide side of the field and you have the ability to be able to clear out the space, they will beat a 30-yard cloud. So you'll see here, like, for the tight end, for example, you see how deep he's going to run. And we're able to throw 
over the top of the deep zone drops. So we're able to manipulate cover two, cover three, cover four with really one concept, which is super, super good. And then the other little last touch of this is if you want to put the running back to the flat, you certainly can do that as well. And then having a backside check down, like a little drag route or something. This is the double corner concept. And you can do this from literally any, pretty much any formation in the game. So when I said you could do this from any formation in the game, the one little caveat is you can run the sale concept from an, a spread set, but it is a little bit more difficult to do the double corner. But I do want to show another example of a double corner, and that's this play curl flat corner out of bunch tight end. So this is the same basic idea here. And then what we're going to do with this is typically you want to run double corner to the wide side. So what you'll see here is we have our slot apprentice corner to the outside receiver. We have the stock corner here, and then we have our clear out streak to circle. So what you'll see here is this gets open to the sideline. You can kind of throw it up into the left, okay? And this would also clear the 30-yard test, and you have your kind of backside tight end as a check down. So you see it's, it's literally the same idea. Now, if you wanted to run, st if, you, if you didn't have the ability to use a slot apprentice corner, then you would be more kind of stuck into the traditional method of we're going to run this setup right here, streak corner flat. We're going to need that streak to be kind of outside the numbers for it to be most effective against the cover three, cover four coverages, and to funnel them into a specific way of having to play defense that is then going to open up a lot of other stuff for my, you know, for your offense, my offense, right? So as you see again, boom. So I wanted to spend a few minutes now talking about this concept from a spread formation or spread type of set. I think there's no better one to talk about it from than trips, but we can also talk about it, you know, from other stuff as well. So the basic idea from a sale, sale was originally a two-man game, a two-man concept, and a, basically the idea is we're going to have a streak and then we're going to have a corner. Now you can add this flat right here if you want to, or a zig to kind of complete the flood aspect of the sail play. But really you don't have to do that. So one of the things that you can do with trips tied in is you can motion this guy across on a little curl, a little backside check down. And now you have a little bit more space for that deep corner to be able to be able to manipulate cover four, cover three, right? So it's all about it's all it's all about the spacing as well. I think that's a, a very underrated aspect of the combo is that you do need space to to run this effectively. So here again, you see just a lot of space on that sideline, and you're able to throw that to the deep in the left. My free form with Patrick Mahomes isn't there right now, but anyway, in general, this is the idea. And then I'll show you what you can do from trips that you can't really do from compression. So. The other thing that you can do from trips that is really important, or really any spread set, is you can invert the, the sale concept. So the way you would do that is, let's say you have verticals. You can do this out of verticals. You just need this guy to go, again, basically right at the numbers. And if you notice here, the outside trips receiver is in that position. So what we can do is we can use an outside apprentice, and we can put this guy on a C route. What this C route is going to do is it's going to basically make it like a almost, it's just a really different version of a corner. But as you see, it's a really nice corner route that's going to be able to manipulate cover four, cover three. And because of the timing of the break of the route, it's going to make it so that that timing is a little bit more clean, again, for manipulating cover three, cover four. So if they start to key in on one receiver, then you can throw it with the inverted setup. I'll show you how to do this out of, again, another random formation. This time we'll choose just a regular gun doubles. And you could even find like a true sale concept is actually more of a 10 to 15 yard out route than a corner route. I just, again, it kind of goes back to that slant post idea where we could just change the depths of the route. So if you wanted to, you could run this right here on the, on the left. And then on the right side, you know, you could basically just do some, some simple, check down read but essentially here you'll see even this deep out route a lot of times he'll get to the sideline a little better than that wasn't able to get out there so you can do that or you can run your street corner 
And you see here again, we're just manipulating that deep left pocket. And we're going to force them to have to adjust to that by putting deep zones on that side. So when they start to have to put, you know, deep zones on both sides, then it's going to open up a lot of space in the middle of the field. That's the that's kind of the the cat and mouse game of the of the sale concept. The sale concept just attacks the essentially attacks the the sideline that the receivers are on. That's the main idea. So see here again, attack the sideline, do a really good job, and we get a nice completion. So that is pretty much the sale concept. If you wanted to do it inverted out of like, let's say you want to do this inverted, you could do a C route and a fade. And you see here again, able to throw this consistently. So really, really nice little play. And you could do this out of anything. I'll show you how you could do this out of like iForm, for example. So let's say you wanted to do this out of iForm. All you got to do is find a play with a corner route if you can't hot route it. So we're just looking PA spider mesh has it. So all we're going to do is streak our circle receiver and we have basically the same idea. And now you see here and also real quick, because I'm in a compressed set, I think it's really important to mention we're in a compressed set. So we want to run this to the short side of the field, get a little bit more time in the pocket. I don't know how uh, Rashawn Gary's just going crazy on the old line here, but in general, look at this. It's crazy. I'm getting instant shadow with contains. This might be the glitch against under center. All right, let's see if we can throw this for you. Let you see. Boom. And now I can't catch it because I can't freeform. But you see the idea. So this this applies to every formation. Every offense can do this. Every offense should do this. It's a must-have play in any offense that you run. It's the sale concept. The next play that we're going to be going over in our little series here on route concepts is we're gonna be going over the seam concept. Now the seam concept or the six concept is, it's a very versatile concept. There's a lot of ways to get to it. I'm gonna talk about the, the main way right now out of Bunch Strong, and there's really two main methods, and it is to play Durham. So what you're gonna do here for, for what, the way that I'm gonna set this up is you're gonna post your slot receiver, drag your tight end, and then just streak your running back. Now, what's the purpose of the seam concept? The purpose of the seam concept is to take advantage of sideline heavy coverage that a lot of people will start to run. So let's say, for example, you play somebody and they're going to run this double flat defense, right? What the seam concept is going to do is we're going to put a receiver in that seam area of the field. The seam area of the field is between the hash marks and the numbers okay and this we can get to this a lot of different ways okay this is one of the ways we're using a seam streak from the running back so you see here they'll kind of clear out that space and then you can kind of throw that essentially in that little seam pocket right there now the other main method of doing this every single year would be another famous play i'm sure that you know of which is the bunch gun bunch it's verticals with a running back streak now, what this is going to do is it's the same idea, okay? It's the same idea, but what the difference is going to be now we're able to do it on both sides. So if you take a look here at this, we have the running back seam streak that's attacking that, again, hash mark to numbers. We have the tight end seam streak that's attacking that hash mark to number space of the field. And so what you'll see here again is we can then throw this up in this pocket. I'm sure somebody's thrown that against you. Or maybe you've thrown that against somebody else. That's what we consider to be the seam area of the field and a way to get to it from these these uh, these formations. Now, the reason that this is so good is for when someone is running a lot of double flat type of defenses, it means that they don't have vert hooks. So if they don't have vert hooks on the field, this is where this can become lethal. So for example, let's say that the user is gonna kind of carry this little short post. If they do that, we know the tight end is gonna be open, right? But let's say they're going to now kind of adjust to that and they're going to go use the tight end. Well, what space of the field is going to be open? It's going to be the left side seam. And we're actually going to throw that by throwing this little post right here before he gets to the deep flat zone. Super, super important. So that's how you would do this out of bunch, for example. Okay. Now we're going to take this concept and we're going to apply it to other formations the, I, the, perfect, the, the perfect way to use this play 
is to either use your running back in the delayed or short seam area of the field, or you can use slot receivers out of spread formations to attack the quick seam of the field, which will show that as well. So the play verticals out of trips tight end does a really good job of this because we have this, you see here, this little streak, it's attacking where? It's attacking the deep seam area, which is between the hash marks and the numbers. So what you're gonna see is we can zip the ball right in there in between the zones really, really effectively against cover four, really effectively against cover three, really effectively against cover two because they don't have, if, they're no, if they don't have a vert hook. The, the vert hook is really the key zone that can help defend the seam area of the field. The vert hook uh, as well as a mid, middle, middle third, which we'll get to here. So let's say they do run a cover two. One of the things that's really nice about this, so you see I do have a vert hook here on the left. So the short seam might be taken away but the deeper seam, as you'll see right here, is gonna get popped right in that little pocket. And you see how that can be a really, really good uh, way to attack cover two. So how would they defend that? Well, what they would have to do is they would have to take this guy and put him in a middle third, okay? And then your vert hook is gonna probably go super deep up to go defend that deep streak, right? So this is where we come back and we say, okay, well, now what we're going to do is we're going to run the running back on a little underneath Texas pattern. And this Texas pattern is going to attack where that vert hook vacated. And you see how we're really manipulating that left side seam. That's the idea with the seams concept is we're manipulating really the seams area of the field. Another way you can do this is utilizing a setup like this, for example. The reason this setup is really effective is because now, especially against like a cover two, let's say they're doing two flat zones, right? And they're in a cover two defense. If the user, the user has to take this tight end every single time because the tight end streak is gonna be open quick. So then what we also have here is we have this seam streak to circle that once he clears that yellow zone, you're gonna be able to throw that consistently. So uh, in a trip set, one way to manipulate a vert hook, for example, would be to run a setup like what I'm about to show you, where, or that I just showed you, where we have the, the interior guy coming, and now we're inside the vert hook, and we're able to manipulate it that way as well. So that's the idea of attack. When someone says attack the seam area of the field, this is kind of what they're talking about. Now, another really underrated way to do this is to put the tight end on a flat and put the running back on a streak. And then on the left side, if you if you wanted to, this is where you could kind of go back to this right here. The reason this is good is because, again, people are going to be blitzing. This is one of the best ways to beat blitzes. The way most people blitz in Madden is they're going to do something like what you're about to see me do here on your screen. So they're going to do something like this or they're going to do something, something like this. OK, so if, if they're doing this coverage here, where's the user going to go? Well, typically, the user is probably going to go over here to the running back because it's the initial threat that he has to take. So this is where I like to use this setup. And if they blitz that left side, well, I just throw it right in the seam right there. Super quick. OK, and then let's say let's say, for example, that the user decides, OK, well, I don't you know, I'm not going to let you do that. I'm going to go. I'm going to go user that. OK, so they're going to go user that which is perfectly fine. What that means for us as a passer is we're then gonna say, okay, the user went to the, to the left, so we're gonna turn to our attention to the right side seam. And oftentimes, it's gonna be completely open, as you can see. So you can create the seam concept just with a simple running back streak, as well as these true slot receivers. Now I wanna spend just a few minutes showing this against out of just some random formations that uh, you could just, you know, and, and again, this is probably best out of a spread based set. You could do the same thing out of, out of, um, out of compression. It's just, uh, you need those kind of like, for example, for example, tight offset, you would need this PA seams play. See, I have that tight end seam on the right. You have the wheel. Um, and then you could maybe put the running back to the streak as well. So let's say I was in a, a doubles formation, for example. So what you'll see here is I'm in a doubles formation. Now, where can I attack the seam the best? If I go to the play four verticals, you even see they give us this kind of seam route to the left side. So what we can do is we're just gonna streak 
that seam on the left. What I like to pair this with is you want to. You can put a, vert, uh, a comeback route on the left or a fade, right? And then I'm going to put the tight end on the streak as well. And then from there, you can kind of, you know, if you wanted to run it like this, this is perfectly fine. But again, we're just attacking the seam area of the field. So what you should see here is once they kind of clear the yellows and then you're going to possession catch it. Once they get over the defenders, you're using the running back as kind of your check down underneath. So we'll show this again. So you see running back's kind of the check down underneath. So the yellows kind of have to bite to him. If they don't, then you can throw your running back in that shallow or short seam area of the field as well, which is important to kind of kind of touch on. And then, you know, what if you guess wrong and you get a man-to-man -man look? If you guess wrong, this is where I like to tag a comeback route to this. So you'll see here, oh, I guess wrong. Well, I got to check down on my running back or my comeback route typically. Another little underrated thing about the seam concept, as I said in the beginning, is it doesn't have to come from the slot receiver. So another method that you can use is you can put the running back on a wheel. You can put the outside receiver on an out route, the slot receiver on a streak or a post, right? Something like this is really effective. And what you'll see is that running back seam wheel. See where it's going to get him? It's getting into that seam area of the field. Now, the best way to do this actually would be to take your running back probably and put him on a streak, put this guy on a flat, put this guy on an outside streak, right? Now it's a little bit more spacing. And then you can throw this again in that short area of the field or the deeper seam area of the field. Another really fun combo is this right here. Very effective. And again, we're just attacking that right side seam. And then we're using the tight end post to attack that kind of left side seam area. We're just kind of getting to the same thing from just multiple different uh, positions and multiple routes, which makes it really difficult for uh, the opponent to figure out what you're doing. The cross concept is probably one of my favorites in Madden every single year. There's a lot of ways to run it. I think it's one of the most effective plays in the game. And we're going to show this out of the play dagger. So we're in Bunch Strong out of Jets. We're going to show this out of the play dagger. So the cross concept essentially is we're going to flood the sideline opposite of the strength of the formation. So they might be, you know, gearing up a defense that's designed to stop double corner to the right. And now we're going to flood to the left. So typically the way this is going to work is you want to have some type of flat route that's going to attack the left side flat. You want to have a clear out route, of course. And then you want to have a backside check down, like dagger, dagger type of route, deep in route is typically the best. What's really cool is they put this play in Bunch Strong Nasty, and it makes it really good because they're going to delay this in route. So it's going to space out well. It's going to tie him well because you want this guy to come over the middle after they've had to commit to the crosser. So essentially the first read is the crosser, and it's the main route on the play, as you can see. They can't run cover four or cover three on that. And that's really important. If you allow someone to run cover four or cover three all game, it's going to be a long game for you. But this, this method right here, what you're going to see is we're just going to pass it down into the outside. And as you can see, really clean, clear out, very nice route. And so what this is going to do is they might say, okay, well, let's throw some cloud flats on the field. Well, that's where we're going to have that underneath drag to be able to check down to and just take what the defense gives us that way, okay? We're attacking that left side flat, we're attacking the left side super deep, and then we're attacking the left side intermediate flat. Then the next thing that we're able to do with this combo is they're going to then eventually user the crosser, right? So they're gonna use this crosser. So if they use the crosser, then we're gonna be looking to the tight end. And as you see how he kind of delays that in route, and you're gonna throw it kind of right in that little pocket, really effective for attacking cover four. This is really also very effective in my opinion because you can often block your running back in this setup. And again, you see, I mean, just simple, really, really nice. So the, one of the other methods that they will typically employ is they will run a cover two. If they run cover two on you and it's a standard cover two, you can sometimes freeform this fade up and to the left, that's a super advanced throw, but you can sometimes can sometimes do that as well, so that's kind of worth pointing out.
But the other main thing that I wanted to point out about cover two is if it's not a double maple, if it's not a 30-yard cloud, this crosser will clear the cloud flat, as you see. And then if they don't have two flat zones, okay, so let's say they don't have a 30-yard cloud and a five-yard underneath zone, then they're going to get high load in the flat area of the field. So what you'll see is this drag is going to come wide open over here, right? So this is kind of the cat and mouse game of the, of the, of the play. So what we're going to walk them into having to do is we're going to walk them into a 30-yard cloud, a five-yard curl flat, and we're going to walk them back into a Mabel defense on both sides. So they have to be able to stop the flood concept. They have to be able to stop the cross concept. And they have to have a little hook curl here to defend the seam concept out of this specific formation. So now the user has to basically play over here to the deep left seam because we can always attack that as well, which therein is going to open up the same concept, just different depths. So how can I use different depths to kind of get at the same basic thing? One of the methods I could do is I could put the tight end on a tight end apprentice crosser, put the uh, R1 receiver on a flat, curl the receiver here, and then just put this guy and put him in the, into the route combo as well as my flat. See, this is essentially the same concept, attacking the same pockets of the field, but now you're tied in apprentice crosser, oftentimes will get underneath of that 30 yard cloud flap. So that's a method that you can certainly use and I do think it's very effective. But again, in general, this dagger play is really good for spacing the field and it kind of gets at the Y cross type of concept. So what I wanted to do next is I wanted to cover how this cross applies to other formations. And one of the best route combina combinations to explain this is out of the play smash return. Smash return is essentially a cross concept. If you think about it, we're going to put the slot receiver on a post, drag the tight end, streak the solo, and block the running back. So what do we have here? Well, we have the left side flat being attacked by the tight end. We have the left side intermediate flat and kind of middle section of the field being attacked by the post. And then we have the, the check down to this return route. So it's exactly the same in terms of how they're going to kind of work together, as you can see. And then if the user just goes out of the middle of the field, for example, then you're going to throw your crossing route. So again, you know, even if they're doing this right here, if the user is not in the middle of the field to cover the post route before it gets to the, the, the cloud, you can throw it before it gets to the cloud. So here he's going to go take that. And then that's going to open up that little backside check down. And you see how this play does a really good job of spacing the field. Now, another method to running the, the crossing concept would be to take a look at trips tied in. Most trips formations have a play called PA cross or PA counter go. And this would basically be the trips tied in version of it. If you wanted to feel free to put the running back to the flat. But this is basically the idea and again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have that streak and you see how we have that kind of backside check down game that we can use with the backside in route. And then the other thing about this is the crosser is gonna force a 30 yard cloud, which then we can advantage and it's gonna open up our shallow cross concept. It's gonna open up our, our seam concept, all of that stuff, okay? So that's, that's the trips version of this. And then I wanted to show this from random formations in case you wanted to cross apply this to whatever formation you want to run it from. I think it's actually hard, hardest to apply this out of a tight doubles, uh, a tight doubles set, for example. So we'll, we'll show it out of that. So if you were in a tight set, you don't really need an in route because the receiver is already in the middle of the field. So what we're going to do is we're going to have that slot post or slot crosser, right? If you want either one, we're going to have a streak. We're going to have the tight end on a out route. And then we can float the back across the formation, put him on a little swing, and then you have that curl route. So you see this is basically the same exact thing, and you could block and release the running back if you wanted to for extra protection. So you see if they, if they leave the middle of the field, you have the curl, and then you also have the crosser. So that's the cross concept and uh, really how it works from a double set 
it's a really good little bootleg. So if you wanted to run like a bootleg out of this, for example, this would be a good example of a bootleg type of idea. And again, if it's backside and if you're in a compressed set, I would use a, a, a curl. But let's say you were in like a, a shotgun double set, then just use a backside in route and you're perfectly fine. And what you'll see here is, you know, as you get out of the pocket, you're able to hit that, that crosser. You know, you're able to kind of get back to your progressions. So this time we'll actually try to block this. And you can do this also by changing the depth. So it could be a slot posed, it could be a slant, it could be, it could be anything. So let me see here. I'll show you one of my favorite methods uh, out of trips real quick to do this. I do this every year. I think this is one of the most underrated route combos in Madden every year from trips tight end. So instead of using a clear out streak, because we're not going to use a clear out streak, we're going to use a tight end post. We're going to use a flat, we're going to use an in route, and we're going to use a slant. So essentially you have the cross concept between the slant, this backside in, and then if you wanted to, you could also do it this way. There's another method here where now the tight end is the flat and the running back is the clear out. See, see what I'm saying? You could do it multiple different ways. And the beauty of this is it just attacks more underneath. So just in case they're doing zone drops, this would be a method to just change the route depths and be able to manipulate the coverage. The last passing concept we're gonna be going over is known as stick. This is also, I see this also as like a triangle concept. And really what we're trying to do with a triangle concept, and I'll show this by using my defensive players, we're trying to attack some very specific points of the defense. So we're trying to attack kind of this middle section and then really where these slot corners are, kind of this vert hook section. And then from there, you can kind of go from there. Okay. So the reason I call this stick is because this is going to do a really good job. Stick is kind of the fundamental uh, version of this. Now, what is this good against? It's good against the blitz. It's also good against double Mabel, which is a popular coverage that you will see if you're running, you know, this offense. So a couple different ways to get to get to it, right? A couple different ways to get to it. One of the things that we can do, one of the methods that you can do is a trail concept, as you see here. So if you watch, we're going to drag this slot receiver, flat this outside receiver, and we're going to ghost the running back. Now, I just want to run the play, and then we're going to show you kind of where every route gets to and why this is a very good stick concept within Bunch Strong. And again, this the stick concept is really the one that has – I think the most amount of variation to it, and it's primarily due to the formation alignment. So what you'll see here is if we just look at where the routes are open or where we can throw, they're throwable. You have this right here that's going to sit in this area. Again, that's that short seam. You have this to take attack the flat, which I still think you know you always want to have something that's going to get to the flat. Now what this is able to do is you can throw this here, or you could throw this on the flat. So you're attacking the flat and the short seam here. And then this is where the triangle is going to kind of become pretty evident here. So you see, if I was to draw a line, I could be able to draw a triangle between this guy, this guy, this guy. You see how there's a little triangular uh, read. What this does is it makes it so that you have to have three yellow zones to be able to defend it. That's the point of stick. So another way to run this, if we wanted to, would be to run a clear out route over here. If you wanted to do something like that. We know from experience with this specific formation that when you don't use a clear out route, then you can get this post wide open over the top. So you see here, a lot of times this post can be, be a big play for you against cover three. So that's the idea. So, um, so that's the, the, the stick play. Now, another way to get to the same thing, okay? Another way to get to the same basic idea, okay, would be to have a curl, a streak, a tight end post, or if you wanted to, you could do it. I mean, you could do it like this. This is perfectly fine. You can use a hitch. And then what I would do over here on the left side is I would hitch the running back and then run it like this or a pivot, something like this right here. And the reason this is a stick concept is we're st our stick now is to the right side and we're just looking at that triangle to the right side. And then from there, if that's not open, then we have that post kind of as the as that middle of the field point 
that's going to complete that that triangular action that we're trying to that we're trying to get. Now, a traditional stick um, is a little different. A traditional stick would basically be this right here, and your triangle is up and to the right, which you can run that as well. But I think it's a little easier. You see how that middle middle of field post is harder to get. You can get to this same idea. Another way to get to it would be to use a slot post. So motion this guy in on a slot post. This would be um, West Coast, for example, has a, a variation of this right here called stick. But essentially, you know, now you see how you're kind of high low in that. See how you're high low in the yellow? That's the idea. Okay. So to me, bunch type formations, they don't have a great stick concept, but they have great triangular read concepts which is the same thing. So that's where I really like the flat ghost. And then I love, you know, this little, this, this, this is the best version of stick from a bunch formation. Now let's say the running back was in a standard bunch. So, which I think is important. So let's say we have our running back over here. Well, we'll put the running back on a ghost. We'll put the slot on a post and then we'll have a flat and a curl. This is the same thing. It's the same thing because the running back is going to sit in the seam on the left seam on the right which holds those yellows in the middle and then you can throw that post either right in the middle when he cuts or wait a little bit and hit him on the sideline depending on the coverage you're playing okay depending on the coverage you're playing now this is also very applicable to trips tight in which i'll show that as well here so what you'll see when we go to trips is we're going to hitch the circle receiver flat this guy right here this is pretty much stick this is more traditional stick and uh, same kind of thing. Again, you get flat pulls there, and then you're high-low in that yellow. And you see we get a really nice manipulation of that coverage. Now, a new method to run this that has become super popular uh, in Madden the last, like this year, and I think Kobo really popularized it, was to essentially do a flat and a zig route. So we're going to have a flat and a zig, which you'll see here. Flat pulls the flat, and then you can throw the zig kind of in that little underneath pocket against that coverage. So that's another method of how you can kind of get to the same thing, you know, from this. Now, another method of stick here that I wanted to cover, we can just cover this out of a basic two by two set. A couple different methods in terms of how you could run this. One of them I showed was the running back wheel. Stick and seam is the, you're attacking kind of the same spots, right? But basically just hitch the tight end, streak this guy. And then on the back side, you could just run a flat and a smart routed in, and you're going to really space the field well with this play, and then you can kind of throw that in that middle part of that triangle.